Hi, everybody. I am Wendy Walker, Deputy Director at Pointless Theater Company. Welcome to Point of Conversations. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with a longtime supporter and someone who has been an actor on our stage, David Kessler. So David, welcome to our conversation today. Uh, it's been more than a year since we did Forest Triage and I got to see you almost every day for a while. So uh, it is nice to see you again. Um, how did you first hear about Pointless Theater and what was your first impression of our company? I first came upon Pointless during uh, the Fringe Festival and I believe it was Imagination Meltdown was the first show that I saw. And it just blew me away with its youthful exuberance and energy. The music reminded me of Harry Nilsson's music. And so I went up to some of the musicians afterwards and they said, you got it. You know why we have our name. And I said, <laughs> and I guess not too many people did. So yeah. So uh, which was your favorite production that you saw as an audience member? Oh, gosh, there are so many. For sheer exuberant entertainment, Minnie the Moocher was astonishing. I loved what you did with The Rite of Spring. It was a beautifully done dance piece. And of course, uh, Ubu, which I had read in high school. I still have my um, high school copy of it. That's great. And I, had, I had seen many horrible productions of Ubu Ra and came to the conclusion that it was a play that could never be performed. It was a play to be read. And then I saw Pointless as Ubu. And y'all pulled the rabbit out of the hat on that one. <laughs> the costumes. They, they had a sense of decomposition before your very eyes as you were watching it. And the facial makeup, which also matched the costumes, was astonishing. But the movement work. So many Pointless productions are as much about movement as they are about words. And since Ubu is such a wordy play, the melding of the movement with the language was absolutely gorgeous, just gorgeous. Alfred Jarre wrote Ubu, started to write it, I believe as a teenager, to mock one of his teachers who was an autocratic idiot. And <laughs> Ubu Wa is about um, a very stupid, yet highly self-confident, boastful idiot who wishes to be a dictator, an autocrat, um, and succeeds, astonishingly, um, wreaking havoc upon most of Europe. Now, I'm not saying there's any relevance to 2016 or today, but golly, make of it what you will. Um, we did happen to use an actual toilet on stage. Do you have any uh, memories of how that affected you as an audience member seeing that? Well, the very first word in Ubu Ra is shit. And shit plays a big part of Ubu. So a toilet is a very important aspect of Ubu Ra as is fecal material, which seems to spew from Ubu, his wife, and envelops the entire world. Um, actually, when I was in college, I found a discarded toilet, which I brought into my dorm room, and we lined it with um, plastic and turned it into a punch bowl. So there you go. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> So in uh, Forest Triage, you played a lead character. What was that process like for you? Though I've done quite a bit of uh, theater in the past five years, Forest Triage was actually the first play I was in that I did not write myself. And I had some trepidation about doing that. When we had the first workshop, the read-through was fine. And then we went in to do the physical aspects of the workshop. And I saw everybody kind of moved into their leotards and stretch pants, and they were putting their ankles around the back of their heads. And we were given these kind of, oh, develop five movements and put them together. And I was totally out of my depth. I love Pointless so much. I did not want to dis disappoint Pointless or the, or the Pointless theater goers. Matt um, came up to me and saw my distress. I didn't come to him. He saw my distress, came up to me, held my hands and said, we know what you can do. We've seen your work. We want you for this role. 
we will do everything to make this role comfortable for you and you comfortable for it and to make you a part of the company. And I was so moved by that. I was brought into the community and there were all these incredibly talented young people. And they kind of looked to me since I was old, they thought I was more experienced. I looked up to them. Oh. I learned so much from them. And in the workshop process, there were things that we developed and played with that became actual elements in the play. So the collaborative aspect of a pointless show is something that I love. For all the shows that I've written myself and, and done myself, I've considered them collaborations. And Pointless has the same attitude towards its productions that I have towards mine, that consensus is what's important. Equal voices are what's important. Community is what's important. And feeling free to experiment and innovate. And then once the production started, the bonding that I felt with my fellow cast members was just so strong. We really felt like we were we were in this community and Farce Triage is about a community. And we all really felt what we were doing in that show. And that's what Pointless does. And I think it does it for the audience too. What does the term adventurous art mean to you? Well, I came of theatrical age uh, many, many years ago in the 1960s. So I saw um, Andre Gregory's uh, Manhattan Project, Alice in Wonderland. If you've ever seen My Dinner with Andre with Wallace Shawn, that's the groundbreaking play that they're talking about. Um, Charles Ludlum's Theatrical Ridiculous Theater Company, uh, The Living Theater Company. So I love the classics, but I adore things that are really wild and innovative. And I like theater that really pushes the boundaries of what we think of theater. And Pointless's adventure is not limited to just a bunch of people on stage. It pulls in all, those, all sorts of different disciplines. So what do you think that Pointless Theater offers to the arts community at large in DC? The audience is an equal partner in every Pointless production. We want the audience, sure, to be challenged and to see things that are different and new, but we also want the audience to be embraced and feel warm and feel, we all feel like we're in a safe place in a pointless production, whether we're on stage, in the audience, or working in the other aspects of the show from directing to stage managing, to lights, to costumes, to whatever. It is a sense of community that is a safe and respectful community. And that's real important these days. Pointless has been such an important part of my theatrical career, both as an audience and as a performer. I am going back on the boards in a limited way, um, probably next month. My very first play, Wombat Rule, is having a special pandemic edition of Wombat Rule. We're gonna be performing in uh, New Sass's backyard. I am so glad you're getting back out there. I'm so glad other companies um, are are being so creative and pivoting and we want to do that as well. And that's why we started our artist fund. Uh, we want to make sure that as we all navigate the crazy waters and crazy times of this pandemic, that we are able to support all of the artists that are part of our Pointless family. Because as you said, once you're part of Pointless, you're here forever. <laughs> like we love, we love our Pointless family. Thank you so much for chatting with me today, David. It was lovely to, to see your smiling face and hear your voice again. Uh, we really appreciate all the years of support and all the creative art that you bring to us.